Welcome to Secure World Boston 2019. I'm your host, Matt Alderman. I am joined by Patrick Sheehan, CEO of Felsway Group. Welcome. Good morning, Matt. So we were talking beforehand mm -hmm. a little bit uh, on this topic. It's all about aligning risk and your business objectives to your security program. Let's start a little bit with the problem. Where are people struggling in building an effective security program to align to business objectives and also address some of those risk concerns? Sure, I, I think it actually starts with the culture, right? I think most organizations view cybersecurity as a department of unsmiling types in the company basement that always say no. And at the end of the day, the more organizations become digital in nature, and more relying upon technology for growth, for operations, the more inherent cyber risk there is. So really, before taking a look at the cyber program, it's really a culture shift for the business to understand that they are a digital company and that cyber risk impacts everybody. Yeah, and I mean, we, we've seen this through the digital transformation process. Digital transformation is not about technology, but technology is an enabler. Exactly. And when technology comes into the mix, security concerns and issues obviously come along with it. So if you're going to embrace digital transformation, then you really have to think about embracing cybersecurity and defenses to protect those assets as you build them out. And, and that has to come from the top, right? Absolutely. I mean, we look at the organizations that we work with, 95% of them have some sort of digital transformation or innovation initiative yeah. going on, yet cyber risk is usually the last, or security risk is usually the last topic of, the, you know, of, that, of that trajectory, so to speak. So it's really about shifting that left and understanding, okay, what are the risks of our digital transformation initiatives? And the more reliant upon technology, we've got to be more aware of that disruptive risk. And if I take a look at that, really, working with the executives that we do work with, it's more about how do you minimize operational, financial, and reputational risk, mm -hmm. not just the cyber risk impacts, because it has an impact, of obviously, across the entire business value system. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't want systems down to lose revenue. Exactly. You don't want to bring down operations. You don't want to impact customers. I mean, all those have dramatic impact to the business as a whole. So how do you start this process? Because I think this is a challenge a lot of at least CISOs have is how do they get, first of all, elevated up into the executive chain? How do you create that right culture and adoption at the top? And then how does that then flow back down of how do you align security into this kind of overall process? Yeah, great question. I think as an industry, because we've, we've been so technically focused, we've come from the technical controls northbound versus the business down. And I think the shift is coming. The more aligned you can be at the business level and understand from the business leaders, what are the business goals and objectives, right? What are the gross initiatives? What are the associated risks that are important and how do you prioritize them? Because you can't do everything. Right. So I think we're creating a common language within the organization, if there's an enterprise risk management framework that exists, great. CISO should start to tie their metrics mm -hmm. and tie their language and how they speak on the cyber risks back to that enterprise risk framework. Doesn't always happen. Right. So it's really a matter of understanding how the business works, how the company makes money, yeah. then understanding what risks are associated with that growth, which gives the context of where the security program should ultimately be focused. Right, because if you're not aligned to those goals, it's going to be very hard to talk about specific security metrics and how they actually meet the goals and objectives of the business side because you, they have to kind of be mapped yes. at, at the end of the day, right? And, you know, I've done a little bit of work on, on metrics and kind of mappings in the past and, and it's rudimentary examples, but if you can do it effectively and you understand how a security control and a set of metrics Absolutely. all the way connect back up to the business objectives, now it's easier for the CISO to walk into the boardroom or to have a conversation with the CEO or other business leaders to say, look, this is how we're, from our department, meeting that goal, and the metrics make sense to that goal versus how many vulnerabilities, how many incidents, all those numbers, but they don't really equate to that goal necessarily. Right, exactly. I would say the, from our experience, the board and business leaders care about one thing, and that's dollars and cents. Yeah. They don't understand what a SQL script injection means <laughs> on the website, right? They don't understand that, nor should they, right? So it's really incumbent upon the security leaders to translate that back into quantifiable metrics. Easier said than done. Right. So when we walk through kind of our engagement with our clients, we ask, first and foremost, 
is your security program right size for your organization, right? If you're not the Department of Defense, don't create policies and these aspirational things that you're never going to accomplish, right. because it's actually more harm than good. The second question is, is it aligned back to the business goals and objectives? Mm -hmm. That's a critical piece to, to the aforementioned commentary about how you tie it back to why the business should care, so that security is not necessarily seen just as another cost center, that it can have business enablement, right? That's really where we start to go. And then once you understand that, define your organizational risk tolerance, because not every risk can be accepted, right, or mitigated or deferred. Oh, right. So it really is, okay, what's an acceptable risk tolerance for this organization? And then how, do the, how does the organization and security leaders use quantifiable metrics based upon the parameters that the business set around risk tolerance, alignment of growth strategy, and what risk they deem as high level risk that we should be ultimately protecting. Which builds a prioritized roadmap of how to build and roll out your security 100%. program. 100%. Yeah. Versus coming from, you know, no offense to NIST, I think NIST is great, but it's, it, the analogy that I'll say about some of these frameworks are, it's like the USDA or FDA that says, as, as adults, we should have 2,000 calories a day. Good baseline, but it didn't take into context, am I trying to lose weight, am I trying to gain weight? Right. So very similar on am the I business side. Am I five foot seven or am I six foot two? Am I LeBron two? James? Right. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's kind of what we're doing is gathering the business context, because everybody has a different tolerance for risk, different budget, different resources, and then ultimately through that context, you can now just start to prioritize where you spend your money on controls and defenses right. with that context of what's important to the business. And if you've got executive leadership buy-in to those risk tolerances, and you've put together a, a prioritized set of objectives for your program, should be a lot easier to justify budget and getting it from the executive team to actually execute on that because now everybody is aligned and now you're not fighting for budget. Budget just would come naturally because everybody agrees these are the risks we want to mitigate. This is the priority we want to do them in. Here's the money to go execute. Yep, it's about accountability. Right, and that's where I think ultimately, part of it is shifting the culture to recognize that cyber is a business risk, but at the same time is that everybody in the business is accountable. So going through that risk tolerance, understanding the critical business processes, the assets that support that, right, yeah. give the technical remediation, but at the same time is, can you elevate that risk of a vulnerability on a critical business system outside of IT to the business owner that ultimately can make the decision in conjunction with IT is this a risk that I'm acceptable with or should I mitigate or defer? Right. So it's really about once the business is aligned and you've got risk frameworks and councils and things of that nature, it's about accountability. And what we've typically found is when you're going to make a security or process change, it's got less pushback because you've engaged the, the business. Right. They're accountable for the risk that you're trying to mitigate, and ultimately for the security leaders, they have a better time of getting the budget to ultimately execute on their program. Right. Accountability, accountability right? Yes. Got to measure the program effectiveness and got to roll that back up. What's the best way to approach the measurement aspects of the program and then that communication back up to the executive and board level? Any advice there? Yeah, uh, we, we call something the pathway to risk intelligence, right? And what, what I, I'm a big believer in the FAIR model and some of these risk quantification frameworks that are out there because it is trying to get to that dollars and cents, mm -hmm. which is ultimately, at the end of the day, the metric that most boards manage risk around. So the reality is we call it kind of the, getting the pathway there. Most organizations haven't gone through the process of understanding the risk, prioritizing the risk, creating risk tolerance. Right. But at the end of the day, once you do that, now you can start to, to quantify those risks. Likelihood, probability, impact. And at the end of the day, if you have you know, leverage industry information as well as your internal operations around what does downtime on a certain system actually equate to, yeah. and that's where that business alignment comes in, now you can start to forecast what those risk impacts would be in dollars and cents, which is ultimately, from our experience, what the business leaders are ultimately making decisions upon to mitigate, defer, accept, as I mentioned right. earlier. So they don't care how many vulnerabilities, no. how many patches you applied, how many incidents you thwarted. What they want to understand is what's that impact in dollars yeah. so that they understand whether they're, the investment's making the right choices. Right, these heat maps that are red, green, yellow that we've done for years, I think are getting a lot of, un coming under a lot of scrutiny because they're so qualitative. Mm -hmm. So again, going back to quantifiable metrics, right? And at the end of the day, what I'm, what I'm, I'm kind of a preaching to the converted here, but it's about dollars and cents. So the more you can start to say, even if it's a baseline of 
one dollar or a million dollars, at least you have a spectrum of, of, of where, what the potential exposure can be, which then ultimately drives a little bit more maturity, and then you can start to figure out, okay, this is a, an impact of certain nature. But at the end of the day, if we're not driving to quantifiable metrics, mm -hmm. namely dollars and cents, it's still qualitative, and it still loses its luster when you bring it to the board, because they, at the end of the day, that's how they're making decisions. Yeah, perfect. That's awesome, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on Security Weekly.